Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cam Connection, where we provide you with regulatory news in between CamCon conferences. But when will the next CamCon take place again? At the end of October, and I'm happy to announce that the program of CamCon Europe 2021 is online on our website. The conference itself will not be held online, but live in London. For 25 years already, CamCon is the go-to live event where you can meet your knowledgeable peers from industry and authorities. Currently, our expectation is that a normal event at the end of October should be possible. So live in London, you're invited, COVID is not. In this camp connection, we will browse the highlights of our powerhouse program and at the same time we will look into regulatory developments in Europe, Asia and the USA. In addition to that, we have a great interview on the rocky road towards a European PFAS restriction and the complexity of the definition of essential use. On Monday, we kickstart the conference week with a complimentary, unique, hands-on workshop on REACH registration IT tools for Europe, UK and Turkey, followed by an in-depth seminar on UK REACH and other UK regulations, before taking a deep dive into the data-driven regulatory roadmap for industry, with suggestions how industry can manage chemical regulatory risks. For this seminar, we have among others invited DG Environment to tell us all about the One Substance, One Assessment approach, as mentioned in the EU Chemical Strategy for Sustainability. The strategy that will also star in the lineup of our Tuesday program. To already get a taste of some of the important European topics and actions for industry, I asked Camille de Hestru from EPA what the most impactful changes are industry can expect. There's a lot happening at the moment that will significantly impact the chemical industry in the coming years. Uh, what we will see first is a revision of the COP regulation. Here we are looking at the publication of a proposal as soon as Q2 2022. Uh, the Commission actually just closed its feedback period on the inception impact assessment on the 1st of June and will now assess input it received as part of its impact assessment. Uh, the most impactful change here uh, will be the creation of new hazard classes and a categorization system under COP for endocrine disruptors one for human health, one for environment. Um, and actually there's a CARICAL subgroup that's already started working on drafting these criteria and is already quite advanced. Uh, things are moving quickly there. New hazard classes will also be created under the CRP for PBT and VPVB, as well as for PMT and VPVM, and potentially a new categorization system as well there. So in parallel to the CRP workstream, the Commission is also working on the revision of the REACH regulation. Uh, it's the first time it's actually been completely reopened since its adoption. Uh, it will be a, a challenge to keep this revision on track uh, on the CSS priorities. However, um, here we can expect a proposal from the Commission by the end of 2022. So among other changes, it's a very broad uh, revision, um, the Commission notably wants to take advantage of this revision to introduce registration requirements for certain polymers and to require information on the environmental footprint of chemicals. The Commission also wants to extend the definition of substances of very high concern, SVHCs, by creating new categories of SVHCs under Article 57, namely for endocrine disruptors, without having to prove the equivalent level of concern, also for PMT and for VPVM. So to widen the definition of SVHEs. Um, another very significant change, which is already quite controversial here, is the introduction of the mixture assessment factor, or factors, uh, depending if uh, there's one or several, in order to take into account the combination effect or cocktail effect of different chemicals. Uh, we can also mention here the reform of the REACH uh, restriction and authorization systems in order to operationalize the concept yet to be defined of essential use. Essential uses in a proposed reform of the authorization and restriction process and its impact on industry are some of the ingredients of the Wednesday program. The complex discussion on essential uses of PFAS and first results of the restriction analysis are discussed in an interview with Natasha Sebrizai of 3N and Martijn Beekman of the Dutch Competent Authority. I asked Martijn what steps have been taken so far in this analysis. I will try to describe the, well, the process from more or less from start to the end. So I see three important phases. So the first phase is the preparation phase. We are in the preparation phase now. So we have done several studies uh, over the last one, one and a half year to find out where PFASs are used, what are the issues, et cetera, are. We intend to submit uh, a restriction dossier uh, July next year. And then the next phase will start, then the scientific 
committees of the European Chemicals Agency will have to formulate its opinion. That will take more or less one year. And then uh, the dossier is handed over to Brussels and then it's going to the, the to the policy process. And that will well, take another, at least another year, I would say. In time, new innovations might emerge that could benefit from PFAS and be a potential future essential use. An example of this is an immersion cooling technique using PFAS for data centers that considerably reduces the need for energy and water and in that way reducing the carbon footprint. I asked Natasha if closed loops are possible and if emission can be minimized. Yes, I mean, uh, the example you, you mentioned uh, here, certainly the closed loops are possible uh, and, uh, and the emissions can be efficiently managed or minimized um, already today. So, yeah, it is possible. And on other aspects you mentioned uh, also uh, when it comes to the recycling systems, uh, although, of course, uh, still a lot more has to happen there. Um, overall, the recycling systems can be possible. And uh, Estria, we are already looking into this also with our customers and partners. I also asked Martijn if there's already some consensus on what is foreseen to be an essential use. Well, the, the short answer is no. <laughs> uh, there is no consensus yet. There is a lot of discussion going on. Uh, you probably are aware that the European Commission also mentioned the essential use concept in their chemi chemical strategy. And they are aiming to come up with criteria by the end of 2022. So yeah, that's uh, one and a half year ahead of us. Uh, and I see a lot of papers, uh, both scientific papers, but also policy papers coming in discussing this issue. Uh, and I don't see any consensus yet, but uh, I think it, it, it is interesting and it's also very re related to the PFAS work, as uh, clearly ex explained by Natasha, that there are a lot of PFAS uses for important uh, applications nowadays. So we have to be carefully consider this. Uh, that, that's clear. It is not an easy discussion. You cannot say, oh, we just replace all PFASs. No, it's not that easy. I am totally aware of that. Also not easy are the regulatory developments in Asia. I discussed with Raymond Ju from REACH24H the first experiences with implementing MEE Order 12 in China. And among others, he explained challenges with notification of polymers. Polymers are very special. So polymers usually pose less hazard to human health and environment. Uh, besides synthesizing by different monomers are easy to form different polymers, which may be reviewed as new substances. Um, ABE order number 7 has special simplified process to those kind of polymers that fulfill the polymer with low concern or 2% polymer, uh, which is a special simplified registration. According to the statistical cases under the number 7, 60% of the registration are from polymer. In order number 12, uh, those simplified registration change to the record notification but those polymers shall not be in the scope of five exclusion conditions. Um, the exclusion under ME on number 12 are very similar to those in the US TASCA polymer exemption manual guidelines. Um, per our experience, the polymer that are qualified for the special registration under the former ME on number seven are sometimes no longer able to apply for the same exemption under ME on number 12 according to the exclusion one, canonic polymer exclusion, uh, which means the company have to go for the registration for those polymers. In addition, the record notification has a random inspection by MEE. So if the official believes that the notifications are not valid after the random check, the notification will be canceled. The applicants need to bear the um, corresponding legal representative stipulated in the measures. Therefore, it is recommended that the um, enterprises treat the judgment of the compliance of the polymer with more caution. Um, the technical difficulty of judging the conformity of a polymer is much more difficult now than that of before. Besides a lot more in MEE Order 12, Raymond and I also talked about important developments in India, Taiwan and Vietnam. All of this and more on the Asia-Pacific region will be discussed during our Thursday and Friday program in London. Not to be missed, so also in London, the US Tosca amendments. They are five years old, but it seems as if the fundamental pieces are still in flux. I asked David Fisher of Keller and Heckman why that is. It's certainly in flux because the 
principal deputy assistant administrator for the Office of Chemical Safety and Pollution Prevention, soon to be the assistant administrator herself, Dr. Michal Friedhoff, has made it very clear that EPA is reconsidering a number of the sub substantive and key policy decisions that were made in the prior administration. And those policy reconsiderations will require further analysis, perhaps in each of the 10 risk evaluations that have been finalized to date. But meanwhile, the risk management rules uh, that their that development at least are continuing. So we have flux in exactly how the risk evaluations are to be carried out, even though they're now final. EPA has, has made it very clear that they will be going back to make some recons to reconsider some of the issues that were decided in the prior administration. At the same time, the risk management rules are underway to address the risks that were identified in the final risk evaluations for the initial 10. So it may sound a little bit confusing. So we have a lot of things going on all at the same time. What was very clear was that Dr. Friedhoff did not want to hold up the promulgation of those risk management rules. So those are continuing. Meanwhile, some reanalysis and reassessment of some of the considerations that were made in the prior administration are underway now, and they may result in changes to the risk evaluation and subsequently risk management. So we'll have to wait to see. In my conversation with David, he also explained what changes we can expect in the way EPA conducts risk evaluations. So please also watch the extended videos of this June 2021 Chem Connection. Thank you for watching, stay healthy and enjoy summer.